lot of other countries, uh, I think 30-some different countries in the world grow industrial hemp. Uh, but we're the primary market for almost every country in the world. The United States, we're the market. And so what an opportunity we're giving away, we're throwing away by not being a part of this industry. And think of how rapidly it could grow if we actually started producing this stuff here and developed some of those value-added businesses that go along with it that will take that, that uh, uh, fiber and turn it into composites, that will take that fiber and turn it into high-quality clothing, uh, into papers, into ropes, into what have you, that will take those oil seeds and turn it into some of those really high-end cosmetics that, uh, uh, that the industry is so looking for, where you've got enormous potential profit. Uh, so th all of that happens as a system. I mean, just for us to grow it isn't enough. You have to build that infrastructure. And that infrastructure uh, is going to take time to do, and you've got to have all parts of it going. And so, I, I mean, we really ought to be in this business. As an independent company, I'm proud to say that our sales uh, are in the range of $100 million. Our Hemp Plus granola is a significant part of our business. I think uh, if Americans ate more hemp, it would help correct the imbalance of essential fatty acids in their diet. I think we'd see a reduction of uh, inflammatory diseases. I think this would be a benefit at lowering heart attack risk, cancer risks. I think it can also uh, do a lot for mental emotional health because the omega-3s are really necessary for proper brain function. With the profitability of grown industrial hemp, we may be netting two, two, 250 per acre of uh, actual profit where if we're looking at other crops, we wouldn't be looking at that profit. The number of vehicles domestically in the United States that have natural fiber components in them is approximately 2.2 million since we launched operations in October 99. Our projections with contracted business that we have going forward that we will be in approximately 5 million vehicles by the end of the year 2006. Bakery has grown. Our sales are in excess of seven million dollars. 
a healthy hemp bread is probably our number three selling bread. I believe it's one of the best selling hemp food products in the country. We can't keep it in stock at our cafe in Minneapolis. Individuals come in buying six loaves at a time. Um, Earthly Body's sales in 2003 were in excess of several million dollars. We've grown just last year alone about 25%, which is a pretty nice jump for us. Overall sales for our hemp candle line at Way Out Wax are roughly $150,000 a year right now. That is up from $5,000 in the first year we introduced them in 1994. We definitely see a positive growth trend in, can in the hemp candle line. Let me tell you what drives me about promoting industrial hemp, making it another alternative for farmers to grow it here in North Dakota. It's economics. It's bottom line. I mean, my training is in economics. I spent my whole life farming. I understand that you can grow all different kinds of things, but in the end, at the end of the year, if you can't make money on it, it doesn't make much sense because I can't stay in business if I can't make money on it. And industrial hemp is one more commodity that hopefully can help me make some money on my farm. You've got different places where this commodity can be used, uh, whether it's uh, the oil commodity, whether it's the fiber that can be used for, for composites in automobile, uh, industry, uh, whether it's for clothing, uh, it just there are innumerable uses. But again, the, the point here is that none of those uses are really going to develop to any great degree until we've got the ability to grow this commodity and that we're able to develop the processing industry that goes with it. It's an enormous challenge.